featured on tonight. We've got a fantastic show. We are featuring the one, the only, Tiny Tim. Also on tonight's program, we're going to announce how you can be a winner at our Fancy Ray American Quality Jewelers $100 giveaway. And we're going to tell you about the unauthorized Fancy Ray Pseudo Celebrity Golf Tournament. So I tell you what, don't go nowhere. I am the Chocolate Human Orchid, so stay tuned because it's time to get down with it. Uh, ooh, my, my, my. Would you welcome, please, Tiny Tim. And welcome back to the Fancy Ray Show. Our special guest tonight for the entire program is the one and only Tiny Tim. In 1969, he burst upon American consciousness with his hit song, Tiptoe Through the Tulips. He was married on the Tonight Show to a record-breaking audience. A few years later, he was playing obscure clubs and his fame declined. Here it is, 1995, and Tiny Tim is on fire. He just completed a new album. He's touring all over the country. Numerous national appearances. My pleasure to introduce Tiny Tim. Well, Mr. Fancy Ray, it's a pleasure being on your show, and thanks for the nice words. Uh, I just might say that a tip through the tulips is to see in 68. 68? Yeah, but the wedding but the wedding was on in 69. Okay. To Miss Vicky in, on December 17th. Mm -hmm. This will mark 26 years of that event. If someone has been an under rock for the last 30 years, they didn't know who Tiny Tim is, who is Tiny Tim? That's a good question. That's what uh, Larry King asked. Um, I would say to the world, the master of confusion. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but where I'm concerned, all I'm trying to do is get some of the great old songs back again. And if there's a message to be said about today's uh, ideals in the world, mm -hmm. which I thank Jesus Christ for his blessings, then that comes around too. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but from the eyes of the public, uh, I would call myself the master of confusion. What exactly was the confusion? Explain it to me. Well, I had this long hair going back to... Uh, 54, mm -hmm. 53, well, 54, really, in the white face makeup, mm -hmm. before the Beatles, before Kiss, before the Rolling Stones came to the scene. And uh, I had a part of it was for show business. The other part was for finding myself. Mm -hmm. I certainly wasn't good looking, mm -hmm. and I liked to appeal to the women. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't want to have the nose cut off <laughs> uh, because I was afraid of operations. Mm -hmm. So I prayed about it. And one day in 52, I woke up, I felt a high voice. Instead of singing songs like uh, the Tony Bennett hit, when he, which made him a star in 51, uh, mm, because of you, there's a song in my heart, and because of you, my romance. And it was just higher and higher. Mm -hmm. And I said, gee, that, that sounds interesting. And I experimented with it. It didn't sound like anybody else. And finally, in 1954, two years later, mm -hmm. I went into a talent night down in Greenwich Village in New York, in fact, in June, the same month, at the Alliance Club. And with, among 10 contestants, uh, you know, who were singing straight, I'm going to live till I die. Uh, I came on with, you are my sunshine. And it, 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 a different sound brought the house down, and I knew that I had something. Really? And so uh, it was a matter of finding myself through appearance, through voice, trying to be original. Originality is the key to success. Absolutely, and you are an original. Well, uh, if you look, take a look at all your greats, you know what I mean, here, whether it's uh, Presley or Rudy Valley or we were talking about James Brown, you'll find that Louis Armstrong, they have things where you can close your eyes and know who, they're, who they are. Mm -hmm. And that's what uh, uh, one needs, whether you're a comic or a singer or even an artist, to have an original style and sound uh, that the world uh, can get a customer that's not been had before. Right. And the American public was captivated. Like I said, the confusion, because they're trying to figure out, who, who is this guy? Is this a put-on? What's going on? That's right. Right. That's right. Uh, they, they were saying, oh, is he a fag? Is he a sissy? Is he, mm -hmm. you know, does he, well, what's going on here? And I had no problems because spiritually I knew that Jesus Christ knew who I was as long as I told the truth mm -hmm. to the press. Mm -hmm. You see, they, they could never find anything on me. But they must have lied on you sometimes, they though. They sure did. Right. Oh, the, the, uh, unfortunately, the human element in everything happened. They, li they lied in 1968 in July. Mm -hmm. uh, I, th I think it was the Chicago Sun-Times or the Tribune. On, on Saturday of, in July, I had a concert 
at 8 o'clock at night um, when I was still hot with tiptoe. And here it was going to rehearsal at 2 o'clock in the afternoon mm -hmm. for a six-hour show later. And here was an early, early edition of a Sunday, uh, either the Times or the, the Sun Times or the Tribune, out with a picture of me uh, panic, banning the con uh, you know, saying how horrible the concert was mm -hmm. when it didn't even start. Oh, 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 oh. oh that's bad. I, I know, sure. It was a lie to the public. How did you react inside when you look at the paper and said the, the concert hasn't even started and they're, they're bad mouthing? These, these are great, good, these are great questions. Okay. Uh, and uh, how did I react? Well, the, the natural thing is to save Sue. Right. Uh, but then, uh, not my darling, the, the term uh, for, <laughs> for the court. But the thing is, uh, then I said to myself, this is the beginning. You're going to face the lies, the truth, the negative, and the positive. And you can put up a, a smell if you want. I, my manager never did follow through. But uh, you'd have to take the good and the bad. And to people like you and to your listeners, uh, here's a point, the praise of the Lord. Please. To people like you, it was a fancy Ray, and your listeners, mm -hmm. even though there was no money won, there is a truth that the Chicago Tribune or sometimes did lie. Mm -hmm. So there's a great example where the press lied, mm -hmm. where they bore a false witness, where in this country they say they go to church every Sunday, are supposed to obey the Ten Commandments, and dare for the print lie and bear false witnesses about me, so the press does lie. Right. It's happened here on the front page in 68 of July. So even though I didn't get any cash, the seeds still go on that the public may know they've got to watch sometimes. They've got to watch sometimes. What you read is not always the truth. Well, especially in this case. Now, with, with the hair and the makeup, why the hair and why the makeup? How did that help you find yourself? Well, in, in one part, it, it get, since I have this long nose here, when the, when the hair was long in, in, in 54, it covered up. You know, it, it gave me more character. Okay. And uh, the makeup, now this is a very interesting thing, the makeup, especially, you know, uh, it, it, you know it was pillow white. Mm -hmm. You know, ivory. You know, the makeup, I always thought of women living in purity mm -hmm. in paradise mm -hmm. and uh, the makeup was it gave me a great feeling where light makeup put me in purity in a paradise in an ecstasy with the princes and these ladies i dreamed about even going back to 47 really? when i met elizabeth taylor when she was 15 years old okay well, we're going to talk some more about this but i tell you what we're going to do right now stay tuned i'm gonna get some makeup tips from you okay, okay. <laughs> I'll give you a great tip. <laughs> Stay tuned. Tiny Tim, tell him, Tiny, it's time to get down with it. All right. Be right back. <laughs> I've been called Slim. I've been called Kim. But no one's ever looked at me and said, ooh, you look like Tiny Tim. <laughs> my, my, my. Yes, we're back on the scene here with the one and only Tiny Tim. Well, Mr. Fancy Ray, it's a pleasure being on your show. Now, you said, you mentioned that you love beautiful women. Now, I, I know that's a, a lifelong thing with you. Uh, let me say this. You know, I say uh, I love beautiful women. That's true. Uh, but every woman, you know, has their own style, their own looks, appeals to somebody. Mm -hmm. There's a purpose. Not everyone can look like Sharon Stone. Not everyone can look like a young Elizabeth Taylor. They all are my beautiful masseuse here. Mm -hmm. uh, and so definitely, uh, you know, the mass, you know, uh, still have great hearts. They, they fulfill their role in marriage. They, they do their best to satisfy their home and their husband. Uh, but everyone has a dream, uh, and everyone has a thing. And I've always dreamt of one beautiful woman in paradise to be with if I ever get to heaven. Uh -huh. And I pray it's Miss Sue here, my darling there. But anyway, uh, and, and so I've always lived for beauty. I remember going back to 1940. Uh, Jean Tierney was very hot then. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 madly in love with her. Uh, uh, June Haver later on, who then married Fred McMurray. Uh, of course, Elizabeth Taylor, Terry Moore, who Howard Hughes liked. Just so many. And in fact, I'm going to tell you, the people watching, we got a surprise for you coming up here real soon, talking about marriage and happiness in Tiny Tim. we got a surprise. Let's move on to something, something I noticed that you're talking about, a lot about religion. Religion is very important to you, obviously. Well, it's not religion. It's, it's Jesus Christ uh, uh, and the great Yahweh God of Israel uh, and the world today in its, in its turmoil, mm -hmm. which is really... Uh, I really not. This is only my opinion. I, I don't want to make your, your show a uh, you know one man deal here. This is only my opinion. Please share your opinion. I want to hear. Get me wrong. That God is not a good God. Right now, it's my opinion. He is an angry God. He is not an easy God. He is a God filled with anger and wrath and ready to push the button. He is angry at this world so much. Uh, 
because they fornicated before marriage. They have used the birth control pill. They have used condoms in school. They have said it's all right to do this and that before marriage. They said that uh, abortions can go. Uh, uh, the rich have had great times and committed adulteries on their wives while the poor are starving in, in ghettos and everywhere. So this is, this is not a pleasant God. He is an angry God, and the fear of the Lord is being a wisdom. I see he respects no one, not, not Tiny Tim or anyone. It is my opinion he, that the, the, the potter does not need the clay. He can make a million Tiny Tims, Herbert Corey's, he can make a million Elvis Presley's, a million Bing Crosby's. That judgment day is going to be the fiercest day in the world. I mean, uh, and I, I really believe when he said weeping and gnashing of teeth, mm -hmm. I pray, I've got to be careful. I pray, you know, he's going to ask, he's going to ask Tiny Tim and Elvis Presley. He's going to ask all these preachers who preach and the world admires them. I gave you all these gifts. What have you done for me? Did you commit fornication? Did you, were you selfish? Did you hold back from the poor? While someone who's born in the ghetto, kids who die at two years old, kids who die, who are paralyzed, who have all these muscular dystrophy diseases, they're already into heaven because they are not judged. Okay, Tyne, you see the problems are going out there. What can someone out there watching, they agree with what you're saying, what can they do? What can they do? Yeah. All they can do is pray, look at themselves, and fear the Lord and ask for forgiveness to start a new page. Okay. There you go. Let's get back to the show business now. Your big break came in what year? Uh, 1968, but I was discovered in 67 in August in New York City by Mo Austin, okay. who was the chairman of the board of Mr. Sinatra's company, Reprise, and uh, on a tip from Peter Yarrow of Peter, Paul, and Mary. Mm -hmm. And you got your big break, and you went on the Tonight Show. Of course, of course you, went, you did laughing first, I believe. Right. And you did the appearances there, and they kept you kind of as a mystery. You'd come on and go off, and they're like, who is this guy? But it was when you got on the Tonight Show that you got to sit down and talk that America was enthralled with you. Well, they, as you said, they were, they were wondering then, too. <laughs> but uh, but it, was, it was more of a thrill for me to appear, uh, to make it once, I thank Jesus Christ for that, uh, because I've been trying to make the grade since 47, mm -hmm. when I met Elizabeth Taylor. Uh, I mean, it, it, I've failed so many times. And it was great to go back to New York uh, in Rockefeller Plaza on the Carson Show. Oh, that's fantastic. A question I have to ask you before I start talking about the Tonight Show is the fact that what kept you going all those years? I read your biography and it was years and years of, of trying and the oddity and people thinking you're weird and, and, and what kept you going all those years? That's been a question that I w must ask you. Another great question, uh, Mr. Fancy Ray. First of all, uh, I had no other choice. They mm -hmm. threw me out of high school, asked me to leave. Uh, I didn't have no trade except what the good Lord gave me singing, mm -hmm. and that's what I pursued. Uh, and so I had no choice. If I wasn't a singer, I'd probably be a messenger because mm -hmm. I used to deliver messages in New York. However, I have followed baseball religiously. I can't lift a bat and hockey. Mm -hmm. And going back to the early 40s, the days when the Dodgers had Dixie Walker uh, and, of course, uh, you know, Pee Wee Reese, the great Eddie Stanker, who was a hustler, and then Jackie Robinson, Campanella, Carl Farillo. Uh, and I followed the hustlers, mm -hmm. the people like, you know, Maury Wills, who played for the Dodgers, uh, Billy Martin. Uh, uh, oh, they, they never quit. These fellows never quit. I always pattern myself in life. Every door that closes, one must open. You never quit. Let me give you an example, if I may. Um, for instance, I always said for every door that closes, two's got to open, mm -hmm. which I learned from Tab Hunter, the actor's mother, back in the early 50s. And the hustling that Eddie Stanky, when he played for the Dodgers and trying to get on base, and Maury Wills and Billy Martin, may rest in peace. Now, the, 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 they fought to win the games. They, they would kill themselves to win. Mm -hmm. And I said, no matter what happens, if I never make the grade, and this is for your listeners, let's say I fail. I go up 50 years, I never make the grade mm -hmm. on my deathbed. I will still say I never quit, and I'll still be discovered tonight. Okay. But if I quit after it was too tough, and I made the grade tomorrow, I already lost because I quitted myself. Okay. One must never quit within. All right. And then he never loses. All right. Well, we're going to be right back with the persistent Tiny Tim. Stay tuned and get down with it. Well, all right, and welcome back. We're back live on location with Tiny Tim. How are you doing, Tiny? Okay, Mr. Vance Ray. Also, I might say before we go on, out of courtesy, uh, uh, sitting on the side there, Mr. Diamond, Jim Dandy, and his son, Mr. Paul, who are great entertainers, and I'm glad that I've known them um, uh, you know, from meeting Miss Sue. 
All right. Back. We're gonna we got an announcement to make. We want to thank those gentlemen over there too for setting this up for us. We have a special treat here for you, ladies and gentlemen. Tiny, you got an announcement to make to our viewer and audience. I think this is a national. This is a world announcement, isn't it? It sure is. Uh, considering uh, breaking first, first time on your uh, any TV show. And you're the first one. The first uh, on the Fancy Ray Show. That's the Fancy Ray on your wonderful show. And uh, I just want to announce that uh, Ms. Gardner has named August 18th, 1995, to be married to me uh, here in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, or uh, the Minnesota area. And I'm very thrilled about this yeah. uh, because, <laughs> what can I say? I hope I can do it justice. All right. Well, congratulations to the wonderful bride-to-be. Thank you. How did you two meet? I read about uh, Tiny, and of course I'd been a fan since I was 12, but I read that he was living in Iowa, in Des Moines. So I called up the hotel that was mentioned in the article and left a message, and two weeks later he called me back. Uh -huh. I was astonished by that. And I invited myself down to meet him, and he said, all right, and that was it. How many years ago was that that you met? Oh, last year, July 28th we mm -hmm. met. Uh, and then I came here, uh, and she, uh, Miss Garda wanted a video, and so... Came here September 8th, and I, I asked her very shortly after that on September 14th. To marry you? Right. It wasn't like a little controversy, like someone else was involved or was in the picture at that time? Or something uh, like well, that? yes. Y yes, I, I sure will. Uh, and I was married uh, to Miss Jan, okay. my second wife. Uh, we never lived together, really. She was in New York. Uh, she still lives in the same place she lived when I met her in 83. A very beautiful girl. Mm -hmm. And I will say that... Uh, you know, she only visited me here and there. Uh, and then when I moved to Iowa in 92, we were separated further. And so when uh, the only, I don't believe in divorce. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, even though divorce was granted, it was only on, the, on this condition. Uh, since Miss since Jan was not around, she never took care of anything, and she was always traveling, not staying with me, then definitely I could only marry in the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. which would absolve both marriages to Miss Jan and Miss Vicky. Okay. And so the church gave me compensation once uh, Mr. Gardner, her father, got together with a few bishops. So are you going to move here to the Twin Cities now? Well, at this point, yes, if that should happen. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I take each second, the days that comes, I go very slowly. Mm -hmm. But if we all live in a healthy, Lord willing, the day will be August 18th at this point. August 18th, Tiny Tim and Miss Sue will be married. That's going to be so fantastic. I am so happy for both of you. Tiny, can you do me a favor? Why don't you sing Miss Sue a little song, a little serenade uh, well, of your love, announced here on the Fancy Ray Show. Oh, Miss Fancy Ray, thanks. Forgive the voice of age hasn't woken up yet. But here's a great song, um, as she knows. But it's the only one I can think when I think of my darling, and there's so many. But uh, why the ukulele? Well, it's easier to hold. Okay. <laughs> Do I want to be with you as the years come and go? Only forever, if you care to know. Would I grant all your wishes and be proud of the task only forever? If someone should ask, how long would it take me to be near if you beckon? Offhand, I would figure less than a second. Do you think I'll remember how you looked? When you smile only forever, that's putting it mild. Oh, that's fantastic, Tiny. That's fantastic. That was by Bing Crosby in about 38. Really, that is just great, man. You keep singing like that, man. I want to marry you, Tiny. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I didn't think it happened yet. <laughs> <laughs> what, what makes, okay, this is your third time around. What has love and life and divorce taught you, Ty? I think a lot of people go through that in life. Well, what, we got, we're short on time. What has that taught you? What has it taught me? What has it taught the world? Uh, it's taught me it's very difficult for two people to live together long. Mm -hmm. And I certainly hope this is an exception here because definitely uh, the heart gets tired, bored, and it loses that loving feeling. And it's very difficult to keep it together. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the real reason for all marriages to break up. Um, and I just pray in this marriage 
Thank God for Christ, I can be an example to Miss Sue, and that spiritual strength will keep us together. All right. Well, I wish you both the best of luck, and I'm really excited. That's, this is just fantastic. I got Jill that's going on to know that we announced it here on the program. What's coming up next for you, Tiny? Well, uh, uh, Mr. Fanshawe, I tell you, I've got, um, you know, an album coming out. Should be out this, the best thing I've ever done, really. Everyone says that, but I really mean it. Uh, called the Prisoner of Love album, mm -hmm. uh, which is already supposed to be out. Uh, which is songs of Russ Colombo, who was one of the great crooners in 1932. Uh, just a snip of, because th this record would sounds almost like him, uh, which I try to emulate that sound. Uh, just a little snip. And then she holds my hand. Her kiss, each one caress will lead the way to happiness she takes me to paradise oh that is just beautiful that is beautiful what's the name of the album uh prisoner of love prisoner of love make sure you check it out tiny tim it has been my pleasure to have you here on the program right. miss right. sue it's been wonderful and i tell you what just best luck to both of you the happy newlyweds right here on the fancy ratio all right, this is Fancy Ray with Tiny Tim once again. Tiny, we're closing the show off, and I think we're going to treat the folks out there to a little duet. When the saints, when the saints go marching in. Go marching in. When the saints go marching in. When they go marching in. Yes, we want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in. Yes, yes. And when the sun, oh, when the sun no longer shines. It doesn't shine. When the sun no longer shines. My, my, my. Yes, we want to be in, in that, that number. number. Woo. When, when the, the saints, saints go, go marching in. Ha, ha, ha.